Oh, sorry for the hesitation there. The thing almost dropped out. Comedy Swiss Keep Secret Tour Zoom. I'm Dan Fergal. I'm your host. Uh, I'm going to be here with, um, uh, with apparently my puppy uh, and uh, and three uh, comedians uh, in panel. We're going to be doing a panel show here. Comedy Swiss Keep Secret Tour Zoom. And we're going to do not a stand-up comedy show where we pretend like we're at a comedy club and you're in the audience and we're standing in front of a brick wall and talking to a microphone, but a show where we all talk to each other like human beings and tell fun and funny stories. It's still going to be fun. It's still going to be funny. You're still going to love it, uh, but it's not going to be uh, a fake stand-up comedy show. But thank you all for being here. Uh, if you protected your country at any point in your lifetime, we appreciate your service. Uh, let's see if we can get Nathan into the, into the discussion here. Uh, Nathan, join us uh, at will. Uh, there's a way yeah. for you to tip us. You go to Venmo.com slash CBKS tour. If you're having a good time, send us a tip. Uh, there's a way for you to participate in the show. There's a chat window down here. You see it in the bottom says chat. There's also Q and A. It's a redundant feature. However you want to do it, uh, you can talk to us there. Uh, we just ask that you do not uh, heckle. There's no reason to do it. We're all at home, uh, living our worst lives. So if you heckle us at home at this point, it's um, it's not good. We're not going to feel great about it, and uh, it's going to send us over the edge. So leave us alone. Uh, in that way. All right, uh, I'm gonna start introducing panelists uh, and going around the circle here. Uh, I'm gonna start from my, uh, this way, uh, with uh, Jay McBride. Jay, thank you for being here. Um, you're still muted. Uh, where are hey. you on earth? I'm back in Albany at a friend's house. That's why there's uh, so much garbage on the walls. <laughs> oh, I kinda <laughs> like the vibe, it's very cool. Yeah, I, you did, like I did crap behind you. You wanna know what's really, really uh, narcissistic? That's me. <laughs> That poster's me. That's so, you? Yeah, that's me. And then, then her asshole dog is around. It, but, it, it's a mess. It's a but mess. It's, her, it's her poster, not yours. Well, actually, I was on the cover of an alternative newspaper up here, so I gave yeah. it to her, and uh, her being sort of a smartass framed it and put it on her wall. That's not narcissistic at all. That's a good friend. Um, she, uh, yes, she is. She's a very good friend. Uh, ass, well, okay, so a, then we'll jump straight to that. Uh, do you find it hard to be trans during Trump? During, yeah, especially especially now that RBG just died. I mean, we are like, I don't know. I'm looking, I'm looking to get on 90 Day Fiance to any Canadian, Swede, uh, Dane, Norwegian, uh, you know, not Finland. Screw you just down. said a bunch uh, of white countries. How about yeah, pretty much? <laughs> I love that Nathan is just finding out that RGB just died, and he's like <laughs> losing his mind down there. It's, I mean, it's like, well, it depends on your. It's not good news. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no. We're all screwed. It's terrible. Like, like yeah, and it just happened. The asteroid can hit us now. The asteroid can come. Like, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm ready. Guys, I'm trying to tape this show so it doesn't have to be as timely. So let's only, let's only <laughs> talk about things that vaguely happened in the last six months. <laughs> that literally happened like in the last ten minutes, and it's like right. some of the biggest news that's gonna like, you know, I'm not trying to be political on this show, but it's a really big yeah. uh, political event. I just yeah. think it's going to affect our audience base because he'll be like, hold on, let me Google this real quick. So let yeah, me that's what Nathan was true. doing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, very cool. Wait, wait, for, pull my finger. Pull my finger. Cover. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm on the <laughs> other side of you. So, my, so your finger's on the wrong side of my screen. Nobody can get it. Uh, and you, it's not in there. It is. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to fart? <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. I, you just aged yourself there. I had no idea how old you were. Now I know for sure that you're in your 30s after doing the pull, the pull my finger gag. That's a timely uh, classic. Continuing around the uh, counterclockwise circle here, I got uh, Lance Weiss. Lance, how are you, man? Pretty good. Yeah, I just, I just got off the phone with my girlfriend because she called me about that news. So it's like I'm like about to go to a comedy show, and then she's like, by the way, this happened. And it's like, um, you know. It's a, it's a, it's in, it's aggressive news, we'll say, for lack sure. to, try, to try and keep it non-political. It's it's in, it's intense news. Yeah. What? Uh, well, where are you right now on Earth? Uh, I'm currently in uh, Manhattan, New York. You City, are very Manhattan. cool. Oh, yeah. all right, good stuff. Well, um, I guess I, you know, when, when things are things are changing. You don't want to be in political. All these things. If um, I guess if you could be anything other than a comedian right now, what would you what would you want to do and why? Uh, I would probably be a professional surfer. Okay. Um, I think that's the coolest job one could have. That you fits you. Travel the planet, you surf, go to the beach on the best days, the best waves, and hang out uh, and wear sandals and shorts. <laughs> to me, that's the greatest job you can possibly have, other than com other than comedian. Yeah, it's interesting. You have the. I just realized as you were saying it that um, surfers and professional wrestlers have a lot in common hair wise. They either go full on, just flip it back, yeah. long hair, or fully bald. So you're 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 winning either way. Yeah, I got like the stone cold uh, Steve Austin or like Goldberg kind of look. 
Yeah, well, who's your surfer equivalent that's bald? I mean, Kelly Slater is the best surfer. He's bald. It doesn't matter what I ask. That it, it comes back to Kelly Slater. That's he is, you're though. consistent. He is. If, if you're nothing talking else. about surfing, he is. You could make up a name, and I'd believe it was the surfer. You could say. <laughs> I'll make up a surfer name real quick, Lance. What? Make up a surfer name. Um, Jacobson William Stevens. He's great. <laughs> and that's a she actually my right? fake name my fake name for this week was uh was uh gravel cobblestone could that be a surfer what do you think jay i can see it i can see yeah. it i can see you riding the weight riding the pipe all right well uh all right well fun fun panel so far let's see if we can ruin it uh i want to see nathan's how much <laughs> body just blown he went from ready to have a good time to just like trying to process the news uh-huh. and his girlfriend's in the back there too also like trying to process it it's hilarious. no i can attest for sure that nathan orden has no emotions he is a sociopath nathan thank you for being in the program where are you on earth i don't know where, who ruth ginsburg is <laughs> Hey, uh, I liked your sketch about uh, the tiger thing. Look at my credit card. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I know. I knew it was supporting. Nice Wait, what's a num- what's the number on that credit card? Put it back up there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, that wasn't the great. Yeah, that wasn't the greatest idea. Yeah, Nathan, it's on the back, dude. Security card. Nathan, okay, it's on the you back. On I live in. I'm in a bedside or Bushwick. I don't know. Yeah, it changes Brooklyn. daily over there. Yeah. Um, I hear that you were recently pooped on. Is this a fact? I don't know why this is. <laughs> yeah, I was at an open mic, and a. a they know more. <laughs> been, yeah, right. It was ev- the everyone in the crowd after my set just shit on me collectively. No, I a pigeon shit on me, uh, and then I found out that pigeons actually don't have assholes; they have cloacas. Yeah, what does that mean? So it means it's the cloaca is a combination of the. Uh, reproductive, digestive, and urinary tract. So I was actually pooped, pissed, and ejaculated on simultaneously. So, uh, you should have been on the other show. We had a porn star on. So you're on the wrong program. I know. <laughs> I immediately got new ideas. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. I, I, what do you think? Is it is it easier or harder to uh, aim your poo from a cloacea, do you think? A cloaca? Cloacea? Cloaca. Cloaca. I think it's probably easier because they're up so high. I mean, they've got to have some sort of like, hawk, hawk ass vision. Hawkeye. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you were not prepared at all for a follow up on that one. That's, that's fun. Yeah, I've been told I look like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I stand on the toilet, I always, whenever I stand on the toilet, I always miss. So it's much easier. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, panel, for being here. I feel like we're going to have a good time. Uh, and again, you can write stuff in the chat. Jay's already taking advantage of that feature. All right. Let's um. Let's. So this show is PG thirteen until it's R. We're gonna we're gonna try Whoops. our best to be PG thirteen as we as we continue. When we go R, we go R. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, all right. So let's do a Mary Bang kill. Let's try to keep it a bang as long as we can. Um, I th- I took I took human beings off the table and I made it a little bit conceptual. Let's do a Mary Bang kill. U.S. Open tennis, U.S. Open golf, and U.S. Open borders. What do you think, Jay? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to F the open borders. Sure. Uh, Cause if that wall goes up, then, uh, you know, I, it might be the only chance I get, you know, sure. if the borders close, I won't have a chance to do it again. So I'd have to F them. And then I'd marry golf because they seem nice, you know, and I'd they have to kill tennis. Nice. They see golf seems nice. He seems nice, you know, like reliable, a hugger, you know, he seems <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then uh, wait, what happened to tennis? Oh, kill. Oh, we just killed tennis. Kill tennis. Uh, kill tennis. Lance. I would probably, um, Probably marry tennis because um, I think Roger Federer has a lot of class. Um, so I would go with that. Uh, and then I would, um, I would, um, what's the other one? You got a, a, a bang or kill? I mean, I, I think uh, kill, I guess the wall. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't like the wall. Um, okay. And then I would, I would, what's the other one? You got to do something? Bang oh. golf. Because yeah. that's where the holes are. Boom! Yeah! Hey, there you go. I like how Lance is like, I'm not going to be political at all. And every one of his answers so far has been very political. He's like, I'm really well, that was the first answer. Just I hate news, the wall. Yeah. All the stuff. I like it. Uh, Nathan, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Nathan, I, um, I think it's funnier if you don't prepare, Dan. I would, uh, I, I would, I, <laughs> I would fuck the wall. Bang! Um, you talking about glory holes? Exactly. Thank you. There's you no wrote that for me. There's open borders. I would, um, I would, I would, uh, fuck the open Don't borders. Don't say that word again. It's bang. <laughs> it's 
Bang! You banged it up. I would bang the open borders uh, and then once and then convince it to build a wall and people could only come in if they could hit a golf ball over it. And nice. then I'd uh, marry tennis. I see. I don't even know if anybody played this game correctly. I don't even know if I wrote this game correctly. Uh, I'm going to marry open it borders. It felt like a home run. <laughs> I'm gonna marry open borders. I'm gonna bang. Um, I'm gonna bang the U.S. Open because I I dig it. It's a good tennis tournament, and I and it's but it's once a year, so it's just a one. It's a one and done. And then I'm going to I'm gonna kill U.S. Open golf. I've never seen it. I don't like it. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of the people that are playing golf that are middle aged, old white men. Um, they're all just going to get canceled soon anyway. They're going to do some Me Too stuff. Who knows? Let's get, let's get them dead before it's a problem. All right, that's how you play that game. Or not. I don't know. I don't know if we successfully did it, but that's what we did. Um, let's move on. Uh, as soon as we lost comedy, uh, like a good friend, during quarantine, I started doing dad jokes into my phone. Uh, you guys can call them dad jokes. You can call them bad jokes. You can call them street jokes. Whatever they are, uh, let's tell some now. I'm going to start with one. Uh, we'll, we'll go around the circle. Just, just spit them out at will. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, why do, uh, why don't we know when a pterodactyl goes potty? Cause the P is silent. All right. Uh, we do. That's a dad joke. You That's get a it. good one. That's a good That's one. Not great. Uh, but you get it. <laughs> Jay, tell it, tell us a dad joke. All right. Uh, did you hear about the silk worm race? The silk no. worm race. It ended in a tie. <laughs> Lance dad jokes. What does a crappy gynecologist say? I'm uh, at your cervix. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that myself. I feel like that's probably true. Nathan. Yeah. Uh, Here's one. Here's a bad joke. Uh, I'm having a bad hair day. My rabbit died. <laughs> I like that one. I wrote that, that. That was almost a spit take on Jay. Um, Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, bang the yeah. Pole? What's the difference between a poorly dressed man on a tricycle and a well-dressed man on a bicycle? A tire. Ah. Nobody know. Okay, Jay, tell us the dad joke. All right, this is not very good. Uh, I put up a high voltage electric fence around my house. My neighbor is dead against it. <laughs> I like that. Lance. Uh, being a rapper would be a difficult job. What, with all the gifts at Christmas time? <laughs> gift wrapper, gift wrapper. <laughs> Nathan. Uh, blood is... <laughs> blood is thicker than water after you come in it. Whoa. <laughs> I think that's just, uh, I think that's just a, like, a, like an advertisement for, uh, for some product that I don't know about yet. All right, that's, <laughs> that's maybe how we play dad jokes. I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's a level of... Um, there's a level of unprofessionalism, and I don't know who's doing it. But I, let's a lot of fun, <laughs> I don't know why everything feels unpremised about this show. So let's see if we can get back on track. Let's do this. Um, <laughs> questions for everybody. Um, I'll go with this one. Uh, last week, there was an all-black remix of Golden Girls that hit the internet. Uh, it was pretty cool. Golden Girls, obviously, we all know, was an all-white show. If you could recast an all-one-ethnicity show to another ethnicity, what show would it be and why Jay McBride? We go to someone else first. <laughs> uh, Nathan Orton. I would do Charlie's Angels Black. <laughs> okay. So would it be Black Angels? Charlie's Black Angels? Would it, would it be? <laughs> what would it be? I, I, uh, I can't. <laughs> would we change Char I, I, would we change charlie's name would it be chuck's angels what would it be i just think it would still be charlie's angels yeah but they they would be uh it would just be more it would be f like better yeah i'm just Wait. trying to be woke i didn't have any <laughs> okay uh lance i probably you know baywatch yeah i heard of that i probably go all irish cast <laughs> Just a ton of drinking and swimming and trying to do rescues. A lot of sunburn? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. No <laughs> umbrellas. <laughs> I like it. Jay, uh, have, we, have we used enough time? Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, I would do intervention and i make them all Canadian. Okay. Because, Wait, I don't think, because they don't get angry at each other. So I'd just be like, yeah, you messed up your life there, buddy. Eh? What are you doing <laughs> that junk? I like that. Uh, I like that all your stereotypical Canada knowledge pretty much comes from the show Fargo. That's what I like about that. That was fun. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. I had a good answer uh, about this, and now you guys threw me off. I would say, 
Um, I would say, okay, I would recast 101 Dalmatians to 101 uh, Pit Bulls and just see what kind of different movie that Oh, I like that. That could be fun. All right, uh, Kanye West got banned from Twitter. It was only 12 hours, but it happened. Uh, who would you ban from Twitter and why? Nathan. Uh, Trump. Yeah, I figured we'd go there eventually. <laughs> only because I just want to see what awesome stuff he came out with at hour 13. <laughs> I just would want to see a he, storm. He because he would just be sitting on it. Yeah, I think he would. I think he it would give him enough time to get his riders involved, and he might actually kill it. Yeah, hilarious. We literally just like the first time we said the word Trump, we lost it. We lost a viewer. Uh, <laughs> the um, I think it's funny. I've only subscribed to uh, a couple people ever on Twitter, and I do find it fun to find when they when they tweet. So there is that kind of vibe where if you're famous and you tweet, you only tweet um, for like in certain chunks. So TJ Miller, for example, would just like at six o'clock every day would just shoot out like 60 tweets. And then that was it for the week. Um, Lance, who would you ban off Twitter and why? Uh, my cousin, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> He's got terrible tweets. Can you read some of them for us? What? Can you read some of them for us? Oh, I don't have it up right now. Let's get, let's get you up to speed. Jay, who would you ban off Twitter? Uh, literally every relative over 60. All of them. Did the you just get a text from Trump from Trump yeah, right now? Dude. I literally <laughs> just got a text from Trump. I'm sorry. Oh, that should, that should get our viewer back. Like, that just proves that you've donated to Trump. I appreciate no, it. No, I haven't. <laughs> the show's got real political. Defend our country. Isn't that crazy though? It's like he heard me. Yeah. He he definitely, so left. Trump definitely watches this uh this this uh this podcast, whatever we I'm call sure. this thing. Uh Jay, sorry. Uh you would ban everyone that did what? Every one of my uh relatives over sixty. Yeah, nice. that's fair. Until they learn, like, the difference between full-blown racism and kind of racist. Yeah. All of that. Kind of racist, but it's close enough to full-blown racism. Yeah. I find, uh, yeah, I find that that's, you know, that type of person is perfect for Facebook. Don't bring that stuff to Twitter. Lance, <laughs> did you got your, <laughs> your cousin's tweets up yet? Oh, no, I didn't go there. Oh, I was so excited to find out what this is about. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, out him like that. <laughs> i like this is it, it is funny i forget this sometimes like sometimes i get heated about something and somebody uh tweets and then i uh, i immediately go to their page and if they have less followers than me i'm like okay this is not significant it doesn't matter i can't get mad uh so that's what's fun about twitter is it's uh it's, do you guys follow do you, do you go through your man your unfollowers too to see who unfollowed you no when i was on that when i was on that uh whatever they call that when i was on that vibe i was getting blocked from all the the social media platforms because it, it read me as a bot so i got out of there quick so now i just sit in nowhere uh and get no follows and no love it's great it's fantastic being on Perfect. social media with no love uh all right let's do this uh, 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 uh. oh I, I removed entire segments of this show i just realized all right lance um what's the best band oh train <laughs> <laughs> what Train, that's the best band. He's not kidding. That's my favorite band. I've seen, How many times I've have you seen Train? Train? I think about 11. Might have been 12 even. Mm -hmm. I've seen about 11 times, and I saw about eight of those alone because nobody would go with me. <laughs> but I have seen Train about 11 times, 12 times. So who uh, do you – do? You, uh, this, is, this I don't understand. When you go to Train by yourself, why don't you yeah. just find the other you, and then you guys can go together to all the shows? Well, I go so sporadically. I've been a fan of Train since what's what's today? Twenty twenty. I've been a train. Today uh, is uh, today is twenty twenty. Yes, that's yeah. I've been a, I've been a fan of Train since uh, two thousand. Hold on, two thousand three. Seventeen years. So it's not yeah. like I go all the time. Over those over eleven times over seventeen years. What was so the song like, that got you? Drops of Jupiter. I mean, that was one of the first classics. The first major hit was Meet Virginia, 1996. Okay. People will know that. That's the thing about Train. People don't realize they got a whole lot more hits than people think. They, I like see. they have every every two years they have a new hit that's like hot on the radio. You just I'm gonna be honest that. with you. I don't want to spend this much time on Train. We're gonna move. <laughs> <laughs> it's already it's gone beyond my, my shelf life of what I know and care about Train. Um, all right, Jay. Um, yeah. But you lost to both your parents. Yes. Um, what is it? What is what? How does grieving work in 2020? And oh. when once you start losing people, so do you realize that you uh, that you loved somebody more than another? Yes. Well, actually, I didn't lose him this year, so it's not that depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, my dad was like 20 years ago, but no, it's like uh, 
yeah, my mom I liked, my dad I didn't, so you know, but they're buried in the same place. So when yeah. I leave flowers, it's like I leave flowers on half and I salt the earth for the other half. You know, it, it's tough. And I just remember like going when my dad was when my mom was sick, I was just like like, like devastating. You know, I was in the hospital every day, just like talking to the doctor, saying, Hey, is there anything you do? All that stuff. And when my dad was in the hospital, I was just looking at the doctor saying, you know, we don't need any heroes, just uh circle of life. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it fun that we're we're still very stunted about death in this country, especially. Um, we're we're very confused. We don't like to talk about it. And a lot of times they won't list how someone died in the obituary, which is all I care about, right? So when somebody goes early, you just want to know what what they went from, partly because you're selfish and you want to know if you have it, right? You want to know <laughs> what the symptoms are, but then also it's like uh, you just want to know. You want to have some understanding of death. And I think we're just, we don't use the right words. Nobody says, like, nobody says uh, uh, died anymore. It's like a lot of passed aways, a lot of like, uh, like, 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 um, like went in their sleep, like just somebody died. Like I saw an article the other day, last time there was a plane crash, they put a, took a dirt nap. Yeah, I don't think that's one of the ones they put in the obituary. Uh, I saw an article, like an article the other day and there was like a plane crash and everyone on the plane died and they said, uh, and they used the word passed away. And it's like, those people did not pass away. Uh, those people died in a fiery crash upon impact that is not a peaceful way to go i always said i would take all my life and death advice from a man with his own blow-up doll <laughs> so i lost my grandfather this year and they were doing that we were playing the game where they were like my like my relatives decided that they all wanted to have pieces of his ashes for some reason and i didn't know what the right answer was so they asked me if i wanted ashes which i had not thought about and it was like a time sensitive thing and i was like you know i like you know when somebody offers you food at a house uh that's like a different ethnicity than you're used to and you're just like yeah just put it on my plate like i'll figure out what to do with it that's how i felt about my grandfather grandfather's ashes i was like yeah just just save me some you know just what it just put it in like a ziploc i'll i'll yeah i'll take some it's a hey weird what thing. ethnicities are you talking about and what kind of food <laughs> <laughs> hey We're, how about this how about yeah. this when you die how do you want to be would you what how what do you want to have happen to you you want anything special or unique yeah i you know, I think it's kind of fucked up because I think prisoners are the only ones that get like a real say on how, on how stuff goes. Or like if you're a prisoner and you're sentenced to death, you get to like say a fun way to die sometimes. You could be like, oh, I could be like, can I be like shot to death in a, in a firing gallery? So like, I think it'd be fun if you if like everything was on the table once you died. Like, wouldn't it be cool to just be shot out of a cannon? Like, that would be fine. Like, I'm dead. Who cares? Shot into where? You going into water? You going yeah, into I don't a care. Or something? I, shoot me onto the uh, onto Route 22 in New Jersey. That thing's always backed up. I don't care. Yeah, the body would be gone in, a, in like five minutes, just disintegrated. <laughs> I would That'd take a. Best. I would take being dumped into a radioactive wasteland because if I I might not die, I might get superpowers. You yeah, know? So it could go really either way. You could yeah, you could get resurrected. Yeah, right. shoot me into the sun. I don't know. Whatever it is. Drop me off on your way to Mars. Whatever it is. I don't know. Nathan, that brings up a good point. How would you wanna how would you wanna be buried slash disposed of? Uh well I first of all, I think the best band is Band of Gypsies. <laughs> Jimi <laughs> Hendrix, Buddy Miles, Billy Cox. But uh I want to be cremated and then buried so they can put me in like a treasure chest and one pallbearer brings me out like a pizza, you know? It'd be funny. <laughs> It's not delivery. It's your dead son. That'd be fun. I do think you want to you want to go out with the joke. <laughs> yeah. I think if you're gonna go, you want to go on like one last hurrah. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. What would be uh, Lance? What would be a comical way that you that you could end your life in front of people? How about that? If I went right over to Jay's camera and was there and did it in her box. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. I would have you in my box anytime. <laughs> <laughs> How incredible. All right, Nathan, um, what's, uh, I don't, you, 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 I'm supposed to ask you this, but I don't understand what's happening. Uh, are you dating or are you celibate or are no, you both? Oh, so I, I haven't ejaculated here and now uh, there's the pain, there's a lot of self-improvement things. Yeah. So all those access to it. Sounds like a downgrade. 25 days. 25 days no come? Yeah. I like it. Wait, so what are you going to do when your body decides to just shoot it out in your sleep? What's your, are you going to mark that off on the calendar? I, I don't think that happens to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a biological thing. You can say whatever you want, but that's anatomically. Uh, it's it hasn't gonna, happened yet. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But hey, I, I, made a, I made a chart as well for how many sleep <laughs> <good> for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah uh, Lance, what's the, longest, uh, what's the longest period of time you've gone without masturbating? Not going to get into it. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. 
Jay, what's the longest period of time you've gone without masturbating? Three, four hours. No, uh, yeah. I, 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 all right. Well, hormones lower sex drive, so I don't even get, I don't even like, I could go a year and not think about it. You know Fuck what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it just, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I just don't need it. No, I did. I don't. I dig it. I'm fine with it. I, I jerked off. I, I jerked page. off into that guy a couple hours ago. So uh, I'm not. I, I'm. It I'm was flat from... before. It was flat yeah. before you jerked off into it. So what's uh, wait? So Nathan, so what's the goal? Are you, do you have like a do you have a period of time you're trying to get to? Just like a Gandhi mm-hmm. fast? What's going to happen? Um. Well. It, it, you know, I just this after um the last time I ejaculated I with uh, someone. I didn't like them very much, and I told myself that I shouldn't do it anymore. Yeah. They, uh, so yeah. I want to be productive. And then I looked at a lot of YouTube videos, and they were like, don't jack off. So I stopped. Yeah, I like uh, I like that your entire life can be like uh, <laughs> like completely changed just by what algorithm you happen to fall into that week. That's just <laughs> <laughs> like, oh well, I'm intermittent fasting and not coming. I'm uh, I'm con I'm, I'm conserving. I like I'm it. intermittent fapping. <laughs> it's chi, right? Isn't that what they call it? Chi? Yeah, my chi's off the charts right now. Yeah, you gotta say you things keep like it in your balls. Yeah, you gotta say things like sperm retention more. That's what you really gotta do. do Semen retention is what any, it hurts uh, to any, say. Di- like energy level difference or anything? I I will I mean to get serious for a second, I feel very productive and very sharp. Except yeah. for right now during this podcast. <laughs> I like how your camera angles change and we're not sure if the young lady behind you is underneath the desk. That's what I like about it so far. Oh no, she's <laughs> We were, she sings and I play guitar. We were just jamming. We're not, I'm not even going to ejaculate on her or anything. Well, yeah, That's may, not the big finale. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all okay. Zoom shows end, especially with me at the helm. All right, well, let's move on. Um, let's, <laughs> let, me sure that I've, let me make sure that I've done everything I was supposed to do in this chunk of the show. All right, let's do this. Um, yeah, let's do this. Stassi, uh, Stassi Schroeder, I don't know if this cares. I just needed a, I just needed a leverage point to start this conversation. Stassi Schroeder, who basically got canceled from her own show recently. Uh, she's one of these like housewife type girls on a Vanderpump show. Uh, she was, uh, she admitted that she was a Karen. Um, so rather than, than have to deal with being canceled, she said, I'm a Karen and I'm gonna take responsibility for being Karen, which is one way to confess to being crappy. Who is your favorite Karen from literature, television, or just your own life, uh, Jay? Well, first of all, everyone on Vanderpump Rules is a Karen, guaranteed. Sure. You know, every one of them. But my favorite would be my mom because she was the worst. Like she would, she would be one of those people that every, if you, you know, she'd just be like, you know what? That was, that came out late and someone's going to hear about it. And it's like, you know, like, don't, don't, please just don't do it. Just don't do it. But every time she would just every single time go in there. It is fun to be with people that are going to snitch on stuff and then, uh, and, and like try to explain to them how certain businesses are supposed to work based on what they thought they were supposed to do. It's like, right. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like, it's busy in here. It's going to make sense that the food takes a while. It's on you for, for doing all the things. Well, also yeah. what's weird is my mom grew up poor. So she wasn't like a rich person. So I'm, I don't know where this came from. I yeah. don't know. Lance, who, Lance, who's a Karen from uh, history, literature, or your own life that you, uh, that you appreciate? My favorite, uh, uh, or one of my favorite, um, my, act, my acting teacher in college was named Karen. And and I, it's honestly the reason I I like went into the arts because she was so awesome. I knew you were gonna uh, misinterpret some of my questions. And her I name was Karen. Lot. Yeah, I get and it. That's and 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 she pushed me to be my all, and now I'm I'm in the Zoom shows. Yeah, you're crushing it. Everybody, check out Lance uh, MeetingBombs.com. He's uh, actually I wonder have you incur- have you met a lot of Karens in your in your Meeting Bomb experience? Lance has been uh, actively bombing people. How quickly does somebody in the Zoom chat that you're in start freaking out and trying to snitch on you? I've had a few. I did a birthday party. I think someone was turning 75, 70, 75. This is a few months back. Yeah. And um, there was a woman in there immediately. She was like, no, thank you. No, thank you. We, we don't want it. No, thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just like immediate. So it happens. It happens from time to time. Just trying to talk over you. I like that. That's funny. Yeah. But you can't talk over me. I'm loud. I'm loud. <laughs> you can't talk over this. Uh, Nathan, who's your favorite Karen from uh, literature, television, or otherwise? Mine's definitely from my personal life. And it was growing up in St. Louis. It was this woman, Karen. She actually, uh, she owned a restaurant that specialized in barbecue. Ooh. And uh, she was really, 
she was just a really nice lady and uh, I'd go there a lot with my family and her name was Karen. Do I need to specify what a Karen is? A Karen is somebody who's gonna, who's, uh, who feels entitled and will snitch on you any chance she gets. I thought we I were just, still on dad jokes. <laughs> I just wanted to do uh, a real Karen who impacted me. Kind of the same bit as Lance, but I went after him. It's not my fault. Though. Yeah, you guys- I liked you, it. You guys, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have similar brains. I like it and hate it at the same time. Fucking All right. Um, where are we at? Uh, Lance. Um, yeah. What's, what changes would you like to see in this country? Oh, well, there's a lot, lot happening in the country, right? In, sure. all, in general, there's a lot going on. I, I, you know what I want to, I want to advocate more for mental health. And especially in this time, you know, I've been reading about like, you know, everything's up, right? Depression, alcoholism, family problems, all the things. But I wish we really focus more on mental health as a whole in this country. We don't do it. Everybody's got issues and we, we just gloss over them like, oh, you'll be all right. But like people are screwed for years because they don't, they don't do it, you know? I dig that. Lance, have you taken time to, uh, to talk to anybody uh, during the quarantine? You talking about therapy wise? Did you talk to a therapist? No, I'm, fuck, I'm not a fucking psycho, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go to um, I go to I go to uh, uh, therapy for OCD. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're very. Uh, it's funny because everybody was freaking out about touching their face and washing their hands, but that's who you've been. You've been preparing for this your whole life. I've been that guy for years. Yeah, this is like the Super Bowl for me. You were quarantined, bro. You went. You immediately got out of town. You quarantined before uh, we even. I think it was March 12th, and I found out you were upstate, and you were up there for like five months. About March, about March 16th, I was out of New York City. You were already gone. out of there by, by Tuesday. Yeah, and most people were not even gone for two weeks. After, in, if, if you did leave, most people weren't even gone for another two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, you had it all figured out. You're a pro. Um, all right, Jay. Uh, what um, People like always like to ask people about their tattoos, right? Like, what's your story? What's the thing? What's your favorite right. tattoo? What do you tell people about your tattoos? Well, first of all, they always say, like, can I ask you a dumb question? Uh, is, did that hurt? And I always say, I always lie, and I say, that's not a dumb question. Uh, but it, I have one right here. This is the last one I got. Okay. And, uh, notice how it's, like, still bruised? I got this in January. <laughs> It's like a moth or what is the the moth? The guy's yeah. doing it. It's like at the at the comedy cellar they had a holiday party and there's a guy there doing flash tattoos for forty bucks. And I was no like, shit. And no one was no one was doing it. I was like, hey, I'm the new person. That'd be so cool. Yeah. So, what, so I what's get a down flash and, tattoo? It's a flat it's like they have pre designs basically. I see. So, like you you can only take one of their designs. You can't I pick see. Thing. So he's um, ready to, he's ready to go. He already he's already ready to rock. Right. So or she or she, right, it was two guys. They you had know it was a dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, because if the, if it was if it was a, a girl tattooing, like every guy from the comedy cellar would be in line trying to get a tattoo from her, so they get her number. Sure. You know, like, that's what comedy. That's what every comedian does. But like, as he's doing it, he just asked me. He's like, "Hey, is that red or green?" <laughs> and I'm thinking. It turns out he's colorblind. Colorblind tattooist. I like this guy. Colorblind tattoo art. And like, I, all I'm thinking is like, uh, what, you know, I was like, I'm going to have to cut off my arm. But uh, <laughs> it's a great sketch character. Colorblind yeah. tattooist. I like, <laughs> I like the idea. But so it's still bruised. So you think that's permanent? I think the ink just got under the layer of skin. It just sort of like, it's me now. I'm more ink Whoa. than person. Yeah. You could so. just say that. Like, you could just say that that's the action of the, the moth going around. You know, when you try to smush a moth and it just leaves like a weird mark, that's, that's it. Right, it farted a gas of blue smoke. Yeah, you just smash that moth in your arm and it's there forever. Doesn't, uh, look, doesn't look like a very much of a flash tattoo. Looks pretty unique to me. <laughs> yeah, thanks to the bruise. <laughs> the um, what was I going to say to you? The uh, yeah, it is fun. I want so it's like I, everybody's going to blame everything that happened in 2020 to them on their body on COVID, right? They're going to be like, oh, I lost my I lost my sense of smell, I lost my sense of taste. I get this bruise from my tattoo because of COVID. I COVID's weird. It's like a weird equalizer for dudes going to the doctor. I found out because like dudes, we used to go to the doctor and then the doctor would just listen to our symptoms and then diagnose us based on our symptoms. And then now they go, well, let's make sure that you get tested for COVID first, which is, I found out uh, recently, this is what they've been doing to women for a long time. When a woman goes to the doctor, uh, no matter what her symptoms are, they go, let's, let's first test you for pregnancy uh, just in case. And you're like, no, 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 like I have like a nail in my forehead. And they're like, well, that's one of the symptoms of pregnancy. Let's make sure you pee on the stick. So that's the first time as a dude, we go and they're like, oh, we're not going to take your word for anything let's make sure you don't have covid because we don't even know what the symptoms are uh it's true about pregnancy tests they gave it to me last time i was in the emergency room <laughs> did you let them know they really did yeah oh yeah 
I'm, I'm like, trust me, you don't need to. And then they're like, we're just gonna run it anyway. I'm like, all right, whatever. Did you did, did you did you have them watch you pee on the stick? <laughs> no. That's, no, uh, that's, actually, they did it like the old school way with like the they use part of the urine sample to do all that stuff. I, they just splash it on themselves. I like it. I, right, like, I like uh, it's a taste test. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. Like that's a, you know, that's a crocodile Dundee thing. That was my favorite thing about the, all those movie characters that could just like look up at the sun and like know what time it was, even though we know that they were like faking it. Uh, I like that idea that somebody would just like MacGyver. They, yeah, you have hepatitis. They just tasted your piss. <laughs> they just know what it tastes like. Uh, all right. Uh, to, to who? Uh, is this true, Nathan? Uh, no. are you a, are you, have you become a philanthropist during COVID? Yes, I have. Okay. Give me more. Tell me what that means. I was walking through McCarran Park and I was I was wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt and these children surrounded me. Well, no they wonder were like you're on 20. 25 days. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just look like Goku charging up a spirit bomb for five episodes. I'm 37 years old. I have no idea what anybody's talking about right now. I'm 32. <laughs> so I was, these five kids surrounded me and they're like, we love your shirt. And I was like, thanks guys. They were like, we love your shoes. And they just... Came in, and then all of a sudden I realized that they were the International Children's Donation Foundation people. And they locked me in. Um, they showed me like this choose your fighter selection of emaciated children. And they're like, you got to pick one. And they make you pick. And I picked this girl. It's a little African girl. She's adorable. But anyways, it was 30 bucks. And then I found out it's 30 bucks every month for the rest of my life. <laughs> Uh, I think you can cancel it, but you go to hell. So I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm do donating to this little girl, and it makes me happy. Um, I think after like 100 donations, they'll just mail me her clitoris. So that, I'm sorry. That was <laughs> that came to me. I thought it'd be funny. So much is happening. Uh, well, so that's a good reminder to tip at the show, Venmo.com, the CBKS tour. Uh, send us some tips. We'll see if we can uh, help Nathan out with a dollar or so. Uh, I heard a comment from the girl behind Nathan. She was like, Nathan, come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite reaction is that, is that, oh, oh, Nathan. That's my favorite reaction from anybody. No, no the, no, um, what, no, what's fun about this, I thought it was going to go different i thought you were going to end up donating your shoes and shirt i thought it actually was just a story of how you got jumped um <laughs> and you're repurposing it in, in a positive way but uh that would have been I, a better bit i appreciate you helping out uh all right well let's do this this is my favorite game uh, recently i figured out that uh, everything on the radio is shenanigans uh no one writes real lyrics that have anything to do with anything anymore and uh i've been isolating those things so last week and the week before and uh we were doing some stuff with uh harry styles with a game called harry styles or shenanigans but i changed it uh so that this week we're going to focus on low wayne so this week we're going to do low wayne or shenanigans i'm going to present you with three lyrics two of them are real low wayne lyrics one of them i made up you have to figure out which one's which you guys can play in the chat uh but i'm gonna ask you guys as well uh all right are you guys ready for round one low wayne or shenanigans yeah, and I have one this week, by the way. Oh, good. All right, so number one on Little Wayne and Shenanigans, round one, number one. Yes, I do it big. Call me Little Astronomical, Wheezy F, baby, and the F is for phenomenal. That's number one. Yes, I do it big. Call me Little Astronomical, Wheezy F, baby, and the F is for phenomenal. Number two, Young Money Militia, and I am the commissioner. You don't want to start with Wheezy because the F is for finisher. Uh, young Money Militia, and I am the commissioner. You don't want to start with Wheezy because the F is for finisher. And number three, I play doctor with your girlfriend. That's my favorite position. Wheezy F champion, the F is for physician. I play doctor with your girlfriend. That's my favorite position. Wheezy F champion, and the F is for physician. What do you think, Jay? Uh, one, two, or three, which one's fake? I say two is fake. Which two is fake. Uh, Wheezy F baby, and the F is for finisher. Uh, Lance, what do you think? I was going to say two as well. F is for finisher and Nathan. Well, physician doesn't start with an F. True. Neither does phenomenal. Really? I'm going to say two because they did. Fair enough. And Emily in the window also says two is fake. Uh, everyone is wrong. I love it when that happens. Uh, number three, I play doctor with your girlfriend. That's my favorite position. Wheezy F champion and the F is for physician. Uh, that's she me. I wrote that. I'm happy about it. And I was pretty sure physician starts with F. I don't know. All right. No, round two. Uh, number one, I just bought a new charm. Fuck the watch. I'll buy a new arm. 
you lukewarm. That's number one. Uh, just bought a new charm. Fuck the watch. I'll buy a new arm. You lukewarm. That's number one. Number two, uh, pull out game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I shot some on your daughter. Uh, pull out Ooh. game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I shot some on your daughter. That's number two. Number three, I got a hundred tats and a hundred million. I keep on switching wifeys. You got to uncle Phil me. I got, I got a hundred tats. I got a hundred million. I keep on switching wifeys. You got to uncle Phil me. What do you think, Nathan? One, two or three, which one's fake? Emily as well. Which one do you think? Um, Emily says two again. I'll go with uh, three because last time people said two, it was three. All right. I don't know what your logic is, but I don't know if you know what math, I don't know what's going on. Lance, what do you think? One, two or three? I think number one is fake. Number one is fake. Uh, you lukewarm, new arm. Uh, Jay, yeah. what do you think? I think I'm going to say two again. Number nice. two. As long as someone gets it right, I'm happy though. Sure. Yeah. Well, and we're just mixing it up now. It's like a weird head your back game where nobody wins. Yes. I love it. Number two, pull out game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I shot some on your daughter. That's, so That's a Dan Frigolette original. Really wow. happy. Really proud That's of that. It's really good, Dan. I feel good about that one. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Jay, you said you brought around Emily and Emily guessed two, uh, two twice. Uh, and she was right once. Uh, Jay, you got around? Yeah, I know you asked us to do it last time and I forgot and I felt like a you douche. But uh you have uh, well, so you gotta you gotta present two rounds then to make up for last week. Well, you wouldn't let me last week actually. No, no, no. Two weeks ago, you you, you I didn't come prepared. Last week I did, but you skipped me. So oh, is that right? Did I really? Yeah. yeah so uh, so we're even. <laughs> that doesn't sound real. All right. Uh, uh, who's your artist? Black Eyed Peas. Yes. Okay. Now I don't They're know. If such you... shenanigans. I love it. Will Will I am is a shenanigan creator. Yeah. Yeah. Very. 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 Very shenanigany. So uh, all these are crazy. So um. Beats so big, I'm stepping on leprechauns. That's number one. Beats? Beats, Beats. so big, I'm like stepping food. on leprechauns. Yeah. Boy, this sounds like the whitest rap ever. Um, yeah. It didn't until you did it. Actually, his, his stuff always sounds Beats white. so big, I'm mm. stepping on leprechauns. <laughs> 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 All right, number two. You ain't going to diss me like those chumps at Disney. Okay. You ain't going to diss me like those chumps at Disney. Yeah. Number three, I ain't stupid. I know what the truth be. Interesting. Number three, uh, very I ain't complex stupid. Round. I know what the truth be. Yeah. So number two could be that uh, that like just a personal vendetta that you got thrown out of Disney for some kind of weird loophole. Um, but I don't like number three, so I'm just gonna say number three is fake. Lance, what do you think? Uh, I think number two is fake. Nathan, I think number uh, two is fake. What does Emily think at home? Wait for Emily Turner's answer. Number one is fake with an exclamation mark, like like she has the information. Like she knows this. She knows. Stepping on leprechauns has been said by someone on the radio, though. Oh, yeah, fuck. that's for sure a real lyric. I yeah. love Nathan has a fact checker. She's just googling lyrics back there. <laughs> I've heard it. Is, baby, he's got a team. So I don't mean to. Jay, which but one's fake? fake? Two is fake. The Number Disney. One. Read it again. Uh, you ain't gonna diss me like those chumps at Disney. Yeah, did something happen to you at Disney World? <laughs> no, no, I uh, had a great time. <laughs> Emily only listens to country. I, hated, I, was afraid, I was afraid of roller coasters, so I didn't go on Space Mountain. I guess that's something. Yeah. So uh, it's every time, yeah, every time I hear the will, the will I am uh, leprechaun lyric, I think of the ludicrous uh, midget on my necklace line. Lance, did you bring around? Yeah, I can do one. All right. Are you uh, gonna wake up? It better be uh, train. train lyrics. <laughs> so you got to pick which one is a train lyric. Sure. I don't. I don't know if I know any train songs. Okay. No. Here's there. Uh, here we go. Yep. Running, running over rainbows and mowing the grass. That's number one. Um, number two is she checks out Mozart while she does Tai Bo. And the third one is um, rainbows and butterflies make your heart sing. Okay, uh, one and three are derivative of each other. So one of those has to be fake. I'm gonna say number one is fake. You said it first to throw us off. Nathan, what do you think? I think, um, I definitely recognized one. Well, I can't cheat. I, I just obviously- <laughs> Are you cheating? I love that there's no prizes and he's like still two. trying to hard to like- <laughs> Two, I'm gonna go with two again. Jay, what do you think? Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to go with one. 
Number one is fake. Uh, Emily just shit directly onto train. I says see they're that. all lame. That's um, not right. <laughs> Lance, what's, not. which one's fake? Well, I think I messed up. I gave two fake and one real. <laughs> I messed up because I did it last minute. But number which two one's... is the Mozart, while she does Tybo, is a real one. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th well thank you for that. Um, the other two are fake. 11 okay. times, huh? Yeah, uh, <laughs> 11 times. Uh, I like this game. Yeah, Nathan, you can absolutely do it. Who's your artist? Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, from the song Little Wing, um, which one of them's real, two are fake. Okay, I see. You and Lance read it both wrong. I see. Yeah, I just like Lance a lot. <laughs> you guys are the same brain. It's very fun to watch. Well, we're awesome. Uh, Classics. Okay, which one's a Jimi Hendrix thing? Hummingbirds, horses, and dragons. Butterflies, zebras, and moonbeams, or frogs, pancakes, and a dead kid. Jesus. Um, I don't know what happened. I'm going to say number two, just because it doesn't have the dead thing in it. Uh, that, was Jay, what do you think? that was all three of them? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say two. Well, do you need it again? No, I'll it's say fine. Two. I'll say two is fake. The moonbeams sounds a little fake. Moonbeams is the real one. Lance, what do you think? Oh, yeah, hold shit. on. Let me check my assistant. <laughs> Let me check my assistant. <laughs> Emily, what do you think? They said number one. What does Emily say? Emily's, Emily's holding the game down. Uh, she has no idea. She doesn't know what's happening. She doesn't even think we're playing the game anymore. Nathan, which one's real? No, Butterflies, Zebras, and Moonbeams is an iconic song. Uh, calling Jimi Hendrix lame is racist. Wait, uh, what happened? Which one's real? Number one, two, or three? Um... Two is the real. Moonbeams one, I forget what order I set them in. But the Nobody's moonbeams. playing this game correctly. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the butterfly, that, that was all one? The first, all right, I, never mind. I didn't have much to do. Uh, this is great. All right, uh, moving on, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know if we did that correctly. I feel like uh, we're crushing this show right now, though. All right, I believe that, I believe that you believe that. Um, all right, fun. let's do a true or false round, because we got some extra time. Uh, Nathan Orton. True or false? I have an idea. Can I no. do? I thought of an impression. No, Nathan Orton. True or false? Your entire family uh, was involved in World Championship Wrestling uh, or were uh, professional wrestling. Let's say. True. Well, my entire true family. That's false. Your entire family. Your mother. <laughs> my entire family. The people. You, you're a fourth. You're the fourth generation. You're the only generation of males, and you. Fuck you. Tell us the story. My dad, my grandpa was a wrestler. My dad was a wrestler. My brother's a wrestler, and I was aborted. And you're what? I was aborted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I, I'm more into music and comedy and not ejaculating. And hip dysplasia. I do have hip dysplasia. I know too Ooh, much about Jay. the panel. That's nice, why, Jay. That's, that's why, why me and Jay are so cool. Right? Your grandfather was a boxer. Let's so Who Jay. Who would win a fight? Your dad or my mom? <laughs> 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 my, dad, my dad threw a mean, uh, threw a mean cross. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, but only if they're trans. I think my dad was only used to hitting. Oh shit! <laughs> Jay, Jay, weigh in, weigh in, uh, weigh in on the tra on the on the trans sports uh, 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 controversy. All right. Ooh. I think if you competed professionally as a guy, you shouldn't be able to compete professionally as a woman. That's okay, that's opinion. fair. That, that's just a nice, a nice little thing that everyone can abide by. That's my thing. But here's, here's my problem with that. If we want to go into a lecture, it's a little political. My problem with them saying across the line, if someone transitioned, like, I don't care about professional athletes. Like, Come on, like the finish line? No, but like professional athletes. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. I'm sorry. I love it. Uh, like, I didn't, uh, like, I don't care about professional athletes and that. Yeah. Like, I really don't. If, like, like, someone, like, won a gold medal as a man and wants to compete as a woman, I think that's stupid, whatever. My biggest issue is that there are, like, 10-year-old kids who are transitioning, and they're being told they can't play soccer for fun. You know, I could just think, yeah. like, that's where I'm just, I just, like, say, like, this is, that's just stupid. Like, for, in fact, women actually develop faster than boys. And when yeah. they have puberty blockers like there is no advantage so so for like a teenage for like someone who's 10 12 wants to play it's like just let them play you know yeah, let's be honest uh soccer uh, at 10 uh years old is not fun for anybody uh right. not the people playing and not the people watching so it's i will uh, say that um yeah, i used to coach little kids soccer yeah and um I mean, to this point uh, i don't know if it's disqualifies but if you get a, if you're a little young a young man you could get kicked in the nuts that's a disadvantage that is a disadvantage. Thank you for your uh, your for your participation on this one. Uh, I do I do I do like that rule. If you competed as a man uh, professionally, then then when you transition, you're you're DQ'd. I like right. that. 
Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I just think, uh, I think the big controversy is the brutal sports where people are, 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 people are being shattered by people right, and who, like, who had the benefit. Oh, let's just talk from an anatomical standpoint. People that had the benefit of testosterone for their training and then, and yeah. then transitioned uh, don't, you know, it's just not a fair. It's I'm not talking about like I, curling. Yeah, if I transition or if I started a sport, like I'm already almost six feet tall. I already have a, like, I would probably. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, you gotta get some new audio. <laughs> some, yeah, something happened. Somebody, somebody on, somebody it. on the internet is trying to, is trying to hack your opinion. Cause yeah. <laughs> you're broken up there for a second. Right. Um, all right, Lance, true or false, false. Um, you once, uh, you you're 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 loosely responsible for almost killing um, a, a, a very famous fantastic comedian. Loosely responsible? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You're 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 tacitly or or um, associate associatively responsible for injuring a pretty a pretty special comedian that was on uh, Thirty Rock. Oh. Um... I'm going to say false. <laughs> These are not prep questions. Tell us the story I'm talking about. I don't know if I can reveal this story. Really? Or, yeah, Mind I don't think I can reveal it. Let's pretend like you know, let's pretend like we don't know who the comedian is. Tell, can you can you tell the story then? I don't think I can. I'm going to tell the story cuz I already this already launched in. Uh Lance went Lance went um uh Lance went skateboarding with a pretty famous comedian uh who's a little bit older than him and I think it seems like the equipment has changed a little bit. Uh, in the last in the in the period of time where he was off uh, off off skateboarding, so he went in, swapped in for a, a state of the art board uh, with yeah. his with his with his uh, with his with his TV money, um, and almost immediately fell off the board and like shattered his arm or something. And then basically, Lance had to be there while this uh, famous person returned the skateboard for being too fast, and he fell awful. So um, they are very quick. Yeah, sorry for blindsiding you with that question. All right, boards are very quick. Dan, yeah. real quick, who makes that shirt you're wearing? <laughs> I think it's Fruit of the Loom. Is it really? It looks comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for Dan? That one counts as Lance's. You're DQ'd for now. Questions for Dan. Jay, questions for Dan. Uh, what reality show do you watch and uh, or would, would want to be on? I, mean, I, love, I, I love the survival shows. I really do. I, I, um, I, a lot has changed since the survival show game. So now you don't need to be a survivalist anymore. You can just go on the show like naked and afraid and just almost die on TV, which is fun. That's a fun thing to do. Um, I've been so close. Did, to, you, watch, did you watch Alone? No, I don't, I don't dig Alone because, here's, because the thing is, it's like they got all this Hold money. on, hold on. Hold on while Nathan finishes this math problem. <laughs> <laughs> they got a, Nathan's actually texting me dick pics right now while we're on the show. I do uh, have no, one. So Alone, here's my, here's, my thing, here's my thing with Naked and Afraid. Number one, Naked and Afraid, they do this thing where they, uh, uh, they say you got to stay uh, alive for, for 21 days. Uh, you got to not eat for 21 days, which is the exact amount of days that you can go without eating food and still survive. Uh, so I just think that show should be called Will They Die? Because that's where we're moving to on these shows. They're trying to kill somebody on TV for ratings. Alone, I think, is messed up because they're like, uh, they're like look, you have, to, uh, you have to outlast everybody. We're not going to tell you whether or not the other people dropped out. And there's $100,000 at the end or whatever the money was. It's like they could just give all of them some money for the amount of days that they stay. And then that gives them like a reason to stick around. But instead it's like an all or nothing thing, which makes everybody almost die. I just don't think it's fair. And none yeah, of these people. Like they, they give you like six grand to permanently ruin your body for 15 days. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, I no, I, but that's the thing is they don't, I, I think, uh, I think naked and afraid pays like a hundred bucks. Uh, it's wild. Um, same thing with 90 Day Fiance. Jay, you were talking about 90 Day Fiance. I was like, I was like right there with 90 Day Fiance, and they're like, "Oh, we don't pay for anything. We're not gonna pay for you to go to Costa Rica." And I was like, "What you even is this?" Until they get married. Yeah, what I even? do it for the citizenship. That's fine. That's all I want. Yeah, but there, but nobody's nice involved. It's just that's just like I go to Costa Rica, have sex with somebody, and then we filmed it. I don't need a film crew for that. I have an iPhone. I can do this. Nathan, okay. what's the question for Dan? Um, have you ever? Uh... How long have you ever retained your semen? Yeah, so I would- Not like in a jar. Yeah, I, I have it with me. Um, no, the, my favorite, uh, the, so the, the, the first time I ever did, uh, first time I ever did a long-term comedy tour, 42 days, and, uh, and I had let somebody else be the, the arrangement for um, how we, um, 
how we sleep and and we had different standards right and so uh yeah he was like hey just don't whack off on me dan (laughs) (laughs) that's what's great about the road isn't there when you go to a hotel there's always two beds right so you put your stuff down on one bed and you come on the other bed that's what hotels are for no but so this guy uh this guy literally um he just he didn't set us up with any privacy so we're staying in like i think the first store we stay uh the the first in st louis we stayed in an art gallery on the floor like just no privacy so it was like it, I didn't make it all 42 days, but there was two chunks. There was one chunk till Denver, which is not New York City, all the way to Denver, and then there was Denver all the way to Alaska. So actually, uh, if you wanted, I have the video of what came out of me in Alaska. It was quite impressive. But then, uh, but then the other, but then the, thing that, <laughs> then the thing that happened in Denver, there was somebody involved, and I and I just felt bad uh, for them to have to endure like 29 days of Are you retention. About Andrew. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was Andrew. It was Andrew. That's Shout so out to Andrew funny. Frank. I do feel like um, the, uh, whoever it is is listening to this, and they're like, "Oh man," and they're like thinking about the days, like which day it was they were with you. Like, <laughs> fuck, dude. No, hundred percent. That person never talked to me again because of what happened. But uh, no, oh. Lance, do you have any questions for Dan? Um, yeah, I I forgot what my original one was, but <laughs> you could have any job on on the streets of New York City. What job would it be? Would you be like a hot dog vendor? Would you be like a pedicab driver? Would you be like a street performer? Any kind of job, what would you do? Would I automatically be good at it? You would be, you'd be like a seven. I'd be a seven at it. Um, You're like pretty good. Yeah, then I would go, I would go full on guy with the dog and the sign. What do you mean? <laughs> full on like, like homeless guy with sign and dog. And you like, like dogs. And yeah. you're just hanging out. What are you doing? Just all hanging right? out with your, with your, with your, and it's always like a gray pit bull. And I don't know if it starts out gray or if that's just a layer of it dirt from New York City. But it's always a gray pit bull. That's actually uh, with, a service they have in the city. You know how New York City has everything? It's a gray pit bull service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you rent a gray pit bull and you just sit on the sidewalk and you said, me and my dog need to make some money. Um, that dog, that dog actually usually has a pretty good life. Most of those guys are not real homeless. Right. Um, no, and I, I mean, the first, the first thing, it's like, come on, eat the dog. I mean, come on, how hungry well, obviously, are you? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> not even that. Let the dog eat you. Uh, <laughs> exactly. That'd give that dog a good life. Uh, you know, <laughs> just break off little parts of your, like, give him a finger a day until you figure it out. I think yeah. that's fair. Um, all right. Well, I don't know what happened to this show, but I think we had fun. It's one of the oddest ones I've done. But uh, I like it. I thought it actually turned out pretty good. Here's where we're at. I'm starting to put these up on the internet. Uh, so the Comedy Discovery Secret Tour podcast has been re uh, reimagined uh, with these shows. We used to do the tour and talk on the tour and all that stuff. Since touring's dead, these shows have become uh, the Comedy Discovery Secret Tour. Starting next week, we're going to drop a new one every Tuesday and Thursday. We're on iTunes, we're on Google Play, wherever there's a podcast, we will be there. Uh, check those out. There's 64 that we got to get through so what's happening um what else i the comedy's best kept decide that the comedy's best secret tour zooms every friday 5 8 10 and midnight check them out uh send us some tips i got the uh, porn stars review podcast every monday guys how do you follow uh you and how do you like share and subscribe to your stuff nathan how do we find you and follow you on the internet um you can go to nathan orton comedy on instagram i have various videos and screenshots of my tweets don't follow me on twitter because twitter's dying is it? I uh, follow, think so. Guys, follow me on TikTok this week. Lance, oh, uh, how do we find you? How do I follow you? I just put it in my box right there. Ooh. All right, n- say no more. That's where we're at. And check out Lance. He's uh, meetingbombs.com. You can check him out. Thank you. Uh, Emily, you before you leave, there's there. a couple other announcements. Jay, how do we find you? How do we follow you? I'll type it now. At Jay McBride on, t- on the dying Twitter. J-A-Y-E. <laughs> B-R-I-D-E. And also I started a Patreon with all my cartoons and stuff like that. So you nice. can check out there's some for free if you want to look at them and see if you're nice. uh, invested. I didn't even know you were doing cartoons. Let's get that on here next time. Um, yeah, most, mostly way, you though. They're mostly you. And weird oh, they're just of me? Yeah. And my, and my crap opinions. Um, there's a way that you can review this show on the internet, wherever you got tickets to this place, you can check it out. Give us a review. It doesn't take a lot of time. It means a lot to us to get a good review. If you had a good time, give us a good review. If you had a bad time, you know what? Just keep your fucking mouth shut. Nobody likes to snitch. All right. That's the show. Thank you guys for being here. Comedy Biscuit Secret Tour.com to get more tickets to these shows. They're 11, 11 all through the pandemic. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, stay safe out there. I know things are opening and, uh, and there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an intensity to wanting to go and live your life and do all the things, but please be safe. This thing is still happening. Uh, thank you to my panel. Thank you to everybody for being here and watching. Um, yeah, do you guys have anything else to say to each other? Can I do the impression? Yeah, I do your impression, please. I want to see it. 
Okay, I thought of this. Um, <clears throat> don't laugh. During the little Wayne, little Wayne part, here's an here's an impression of a little Wayne uh, babysitting a child with uh, with uh, what do you call that asthma, and then he has to call an ambulance. Help! I got a wheezy baby. <laughs> All right. I told you not to laugh. All right, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. It's a way, great way to end the show. I feel like I, I feel like Nathan is always doing these shows with that person behind him, and he, she's always she's like, "Oh fuck, I gotta hide for an hour." <laughs> <laughs> it's actually yeah. just a pair of legs. She, he took off a mannequin. Yeah, Nathan, you gotta write that on your Tinder profile. Come over and hang out, Netflix and chill slash hide for an hour while I do my Zoom show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right thank you to my whole panel uh, i appreciate you guys uh, i miss you guys hopefully we'll figure this out <laughs> i just saw that jay <laughs> bye everybody <laughs>